What's up guys, today I got another tutorial for you. Um, this one was actually a, re a request that was made by um, another member of a Discord community that I'm in. And what he was trying to do was add a little intro cutscene um, to his game before the game actually starts so that when you press new game, a little story pops up. And when that story ends, it basically transitions you to the start of the game. Um, so today I'm going to show you guys how to make something like that. It's pretty simple. Um, I've, I already have one done for a old game that I was making. Um, so let me just play it so you guys can see what it'll look like. So as you guys can see, um, there's a lot of stuff going on, but I'm just going to focus on this first part here. So what actually happens is when this, basically when this timeline is done playing, um, this empty game object activates that actually has a script on it. And what this script does is actually, upon activation, it um, <clears throat> transports us to the next scene. So it basically loads the next scene, which was that other cutscene you were seeing with the uh, camera zooming in on that that candle and the painting behind it um, and that is actually another um, timeline animation that has the same thing on it actually which is another one of these guys which then transports us and loads that um, scene loader scene with, which with the uh, which is what you guys saw with the uh, um, the spinning dial and the uh, little paragraph there and that was actually loading our main game um, so right now I'm just gonna focus on this part um, and what I'm gonna do is actually basically start from scratch so I'm just gonna delete all this here and uh, I'll get it back because I'm not gonna save this new stuff but I'm just gonna delete pretty much everything okay so when you create a new scene this is pretty much what you're gonna get um, you're going to get a main camera, di a directional light, <clears throat> maybe some other stuff. But what I wanted here was a completely black screen. So I just disabled my directional light. That way, uh, you know, we just have a pitch black screen there. And uh, you want to be in 2D mode for this because you want to be able to see your canvas. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Game Object, UI, and we're going to create a canvas. And as you can see, we got this little rectangle here. And this is basically what is going to hold all of our text and everything that you're going to see on the bottom. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create a timeline for this canvas. If you don't see your timeline window, just go to Window, Rendering, uh, not Rendering, sorry, Window, Sequencing, and Timeline. And just click on that, and it's going to populate with this Timeline tab here. So what we want to do is we want to click on our canvas that we just made and click Create and we're going to create a new canvas timeline and uh, save that somewhere where you can find it. I just saved it to my desktop because I'm just going to delete it later. <clears throat> cool. So what we want to do is actually now we want to create some text which is basically going to be our story. So we want to click on canvas, I'm um, sorry, right click on canvas, go down to UI and hit the text button here. Now as you can see this is really 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 small and <laughs> we can't see it so what we want to do First off, we want to uh, <clears throat> just type in what we want. So I'm going to do this in a few sentences. I'm going to put um, 
this is the first sentence of the story and obviously you can put whatever you want and we still can't see this so what we got to do is go over to our rectangle tool which is by default already going to be selected and we just want to drag that make that a little bit bigger so that we can fit our text in it and obviously we still can't see our text because the <clears throat> font size is so small so let's make that I don't know probably that's a little small I think mine was a hundred let me make this a hundred and see yeah hundred's good okay yeah I mean you can make it whatever size you want but as you can see now we can actually see this and I kinda want to position mine towards the bottom <coughs> sorry my throat's a little messed up today so let's uh, go down to our paragraph alignment center this and put it in the bottom okay so now you, as you can see it's centered right about there and you can see that line helps us out a little bit so let's move this down right about there yeah I think that looks good change this color to white that way we can see it and uh, you guys can mess with the fonts too if you want you can you know change it whatever font you want you can upload fonts to unity um, I already have a few that I've uploaded, so I'm just going to use this one for now. All right, so <clears throat> now we have the first sentence of our story. So how do we get it to pop up on the screen there? So what we want to do is on our Canvas timeline, we're going to take that text. And let me just rename it to first sentence to just be a little bit more organized. Let's drag that down here. And what we want to do is add an activation track. On my other one, actually, I had an animation track, which allowed me to kind of fade the text in and fade it out, and that's a little bit more complicated. Um, so for now, I'm just going to stick with this just so you guys can get a rough idea of how it's done. Okay? So when we play this, you can see that nothing really happens just because there's only one thing here. So let, let's, let's add another one. So let's just duplicate this. I'm going to change the name to second sentence. And let's change the text on this one. Okay, so let's put, this is the second sentence of the story. Okay. <clears throat> and as you can see, oops, second, they kind of overlap each other. But you're not going to see that because what we're going to do is, back on our canvas, we're going to drag and drop the second sentence down here and add an activation track. And if we drag this, to start when the second one finishes then you can see that it's only gonna play at the start of three seconds and we can move this around here to kinda give it some space it's really up to you so the first one's gonna play it's gonna come off the screen and the second sentence is gonna play okay and you can make it start right when this one finishes you can give it a little bit of a time lapse to kinda give it that fade in fade out effect <coughs> if you want and Let's just do one more. Why not? Let's do a uh, third sentence. And let's do this is the third sentence of the story. Go back to our canvas, drag and drop this, activation track, and start. Oops. Let's start it. About a half second later. And each of these is going on for three seconds. So let's just put that at three seconds there. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> and as you can see, since these are activation tracks, if you look up, look up here, as they activate, they appear in the hierarchy, which is really cool because it's, it's going to activate them only when it needs to. So they're not all on the screen at once. Okay. <clears throat> so let's play that and see how it looks. Okay, so I need to change this. There we go. And if you noticed, I didn't space these out properly. So this was, okay, it was a full second. Okay. There we go. So now everything's evened out. And <clears throat> the last thing we want to do is actually create a scene loader. So we're going to right click, create empty, and you can just call it, I'll just call it, 
next scene, next scene loader or something. And what we want to do is we want to attach a script to this that's going to on enable load our next scene. So let's go to our project and I actually have a script already done. So you guys can just copy this. So let me open it and uh, just just copy this exactly. The only thing you want to change, well, there's going to be two, two things you want to change. Since my script is called main story, this is going to be called main story. Now, if your script was called something else, just make sure that whatever you call this is what matches this or else it's not going to work. And in between the parentheses here, you want to put the name of the next scene you want to load. So for example, if we look in my build settings here, we have our intro, or sorry, our main story, which is the scene we're working on now, main story, and we're going to load the intro. Okay, so you want to take that next scene, put it into your build settings here, and make sure that it comes after the scene we're working on. Okay? So let's go back to our scene loader. And what we want to do is drag the script we just made onto that scene loader. And what it's going to do is when we enable this scene loader here, let's go back to our timeline, drag and drop the scene loader in here, add activation track, put that, I'll put it right here, I guess. You can put it right after. I'll just put it a second after. What it's going to do is it's going to load our next scene. So you can see right now it's not active. Once it activates, it has that script on it that's actually going to load our next scene. So let's just play this and see if it loads that next cutscene we that I had already made. Okay. <coughs> so it basically loaded it instantly. <coughs> and the reason it did that... <coughs> sorry about that. The reason it did that is because this is already active. So you want to deactivate this so that it only activates when we want it to activate. So let's go back and let's, let's try to play this again. Boom, and there, now you see it's working. So this first sentence goes, second sentence goes, third sentence goes, and then after that it should load our next scene. And just like that, our next scene is loaded. Cool. Uh, one last thing you guys can do just for, you know, to make it sound a little bit better, we can add some music to this. So let's go to our project and you move this up here. You can really put I just I'll just put this in here just for example, but you can really put whatever music you want. It's really long music. Let's zoom back in a little bit. What's really cool about this too is you can actually go into your inspector and you can change the volume of this music, you can change when it fades in and fades out. You can do a lot of stuff with it. So let's just play this one more time. Cool. And that's it. Alright, so now we have a beginning, little beginning story that uh, transitions into the next scene of our game. And obviously, like I said, the one I had was a little bit more complicated. Um, let me go back to it. Go back to my product here. Let's not save this. Let that load a little bit. Cool. All right. So as you can see, the one I made earlier has our story sentences in it. And actually, I use animation tracks. So what I did was I actually animated each sentence to kind of fade in and fade out. So for example, this first sentence ended at seven seconds. So if, we, if I go back to my second sentence, you can see that it's not going to start until about eight seconds so the first one ends at second sentence sorry sec seven seconds and then there's a little bit of a gap and then the second sentence starts at eight seconds and does the same thing so that's how you guys would add animations basically to kind of give it that fade in fade out effect there also I have some audio I have 
a uh, directional light that, uh, as you guys can see, that little red light. Um, go to my directional light. I got this little firelight script attached to it that kind of gives it a little pulsating effect. And um, I have just some music. The music I found, added that to it. Um, <clears throat> and then right here is when my scene loader activates. So right around 45 seconds, this uh, scene loader activates here, and it transitions us into that next cutscene. Cool. So hopefully this guy's help. Hopefully this tutorial helped you guys. Um, give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe as well. And I'll see you in the next one.